and welcome to English Learning Station. Today, let us learn about transcoding graphics in technical English. To begin with, let us understand what graphics is, which is an integral part of technical communication. Any set of symbols that communicates meaningful messages is a code. A language is a set of symbols and hence it is a code. Also, graphs, flowcharts, bar charts, pie charts and tables are all sets of symbols and therefore they are also codes. Transcoding occurs when we move information from one code to another code. For instance, when we provide information in the form of continuous writing, then it is given in one form of code. Again, when the same information is presented in the form of a graph or a flowchart or a bar chart, then it is another form of code. So, when we convert a continuous writing into a graph or a flowchart or vice versa, we call this process as transcoding. In technical communication, graphs, flowcharts, bar charts, are often used to present numerical data in an easy to assimilate form. We can also draw useful inferences from these visuals than from descriptive writing. This is because these graphical representations are known for being brief, clear, for being effective, accessible and understandable. There are different types of graphical representations and let us learn the significance of each of them in detail. The first is line graph. We use line graph to observe the relationship between two related phenomena. Line graphs represent how data has changed over time. This type of charts is especially useful when we have to demonstrate the trend or the numbers that are connected. For example, how sales vary within a year. Besides, line graphs can also show dependencies between two objects during a particular period. The second type of graphical representation is bar chart which is otherwise called a histogram. These types of bar charts are used to compare two or more facts with reference to a particular item. Bar charts or bar graphs or histograms are used to show relationships between different data series that are independent of each other. The third type of graphical representation is flowchart. Narrative writing of different stages of development of a process can be represented using a flowchart. The fourth type of graphical representation is pie diagram or pie chart. The proportion of distribution of components or progress within a given total situation is represented using a pie chart. Pie charts are designed to visualize how a whole is divided into various parts. Each segment of the pie is a particular category within the total data set. In this way, it represents a percentage distribution. The next type of graphical representation is table or tabular column. When one or more than one parameter is supposed to be compared with the number of items, then table or tabular columns are preferred. And finally, the last type of graphical representation is tree diagram, which is used to show the historical nature of dependent processes. There is a step-by-step -step procedure to be followed while we transcode graphics. The first step is to take a good look at the graphical representation. Observe the given chart or table and take in the meanings the code and the symbols provide. 
understand the idea and the meaning and interpret and infer messages from the given graphical representation after which arrange your thoughts in the logical sequence in the sense put the message in a logical continuity and begin the paragraph writing with the topic sentence and follow it up with a sentence that help expand explain elaborate and exemplify the given graphical representation all this is achieved by using discourse markers or signpost words discourse markers or signpost words are expressions which are used to show how the discourse is constructed they show the connection between what a speaker is saying or what a writer is writing and what has already been said or what is going to be said in future they can help to make clear the structure of what is being said some of the common types of discourse markers used in continuous writing include discourse markers used for indicating balancing contrasting points such as on the other hand on the one hand while whereas etc the other types of discourse markers include discourse markers which indicate emphasizing a contrast similarity counter argument structuring generalizing and logical sequencing now let us learn how to decode a graphical representation the given graphical representation is a line graph it indicates the export of wheat from 1985 to 1990 in millions of tons in three different parts of the world namely australia canada and european community the horizontal axis indicates the years from 1985 to 1990 and the vertical axis indicates the export of wheat in millions of tons so to begin with the first step to decode the given graphical representation is to take a good look at the code that is to take a good look at the graphical representation and to interpret and infer messages from the given picture so let us very closely analyze the trend of the graph for each part of the world how is the trend of the wheat export export in australia canada and european community over a time period of 5 years so after we closely observe and infer the details then we got to start writing about the given graphical representation the sample is given below the second type of graphical representation is bar chart or histogram the given bar chart indicates the distribution of men and women in higher colleges of technology in five different states in the country so here are the bars which indicate the number of men and women in higher colleges of technology in each state so again we follow the same procedure we see what is given in the horizontal and the vertical axis uh, after which we compare the number of men and women in higher colleges of technology uh, in the five different states so how is the trend or what's the number of men in higher colleges of technology in the five states and what is the number of women again in high colleges of technology in five different states is there a comparison that could be made between men and women and different states so all that is closely inferred and then is represented in continuous writing we also have a sample for continuous writing based on the inference from the given graphical representation
The third type of graphical representation is pie chart or pie diagram. So in the given example, there are two pie charts which indicate the spending patterns in the US in two different years. That is the spending patterns in 1966 and the spending pattern in 1996. So a comparison in the spending patterns in the two different years with the difference of 30 years, how has it changed is what we got to analyze. So we got to closely look into each of the component involved in both the years such as spending on books, spending on food, restaurants, petrol, car, furniture, computer, etc. So, what is the proportion that is spent in 1966 and how has it changed in 1996 is what we got to infer from the given pie chart. The same is given uh, below as an example in the form of descriptive writing. The next type of graphical representation is table. When it comes for representing information in the form of a table, one should be very careful while transcoding it to continuous writing because a number of data is presented in a table. For example, in the given table, we have information about the favorite pastimes of people from the age group of 30 to 50 years in eight different countries. So here we have a list of seven different hobbies in eight different countries. So the number of data that we have is 7 into 8 which is equal to 56. So we cannot bring all the 56 values in a continuous writing because that would make our writing quite awkward. So, we should be diligent enough to infer the important information and present them in a logical sequence to make it quite interesting and comprehensible. While transcoding graphics, we cannot be using the same verbs and nouns throughout. So, to improve clarity and to enhance variety in our writing, different verb forms, noun forms, adjectives and adverbs could be used. And here is a list of verbs, nouns, adjectives and adverbs which can be used while transcoding graphics in continuous writing. With this, we come to the end of our lesson on transcoding graphics. If you have any doubts or queries, please do post it on the comment section. Thank you for watching.